The Quiet Village Girl Written by Cyprian Jossen, Audiobook Chapter 2 The Wisdom of My Grandma Nielma was a phantom of delight. Those who encountered her couldn't help but gaze upon her beauty. Some of the villagers whispered that she was the embodiment of Mami Wada, a mythical mermaid-like figure. However, Nielma was just a regular human, born like any other. Yet, she also possessed a heart of beauty. Her long hair flowed down her back, and on Sundays, she adorned it with decorative beads, setting her apart from the other women of Iliagba village who braided their hair. Her lush eyelashes and eyebrows were so thick that she had to groom them regularly to avoid obstructing her vision. With her fair complexion that shone like the lightning that precedes an African thunderstorm, Nioma was a true work of art. Many individuals in Iliagba, both men and women, held Nioma, my grandmother, in high esteem. She was renowned for her industrious nature and shared with me tales of her prosperous trading days in Abadan before the outbreak of the Biafra War. Forced to flee to the eastern region, Nioma regaled me with her life story one evening during one of our moonlit story sessions. We were seated on a bamboo bench outside her cottage, basking in the soft glow of the moon. Amaka, my dear daughter, I have been contemplating and mapping out the day when I will share with you tales from my life so that you may learn from my experiences. Grandmother shifted her position and continued. Life is not easy, nothing in this world comes easy. Our deity rewards hard work, my child. I listened attentively, my ears and eyes fixed on her words. You are the only one in this house that I can confide in. Your father and I are getting old, and we might not be around when you reach adulthood. I have worked hard throughout my life, especially during the early days of my marriage to your father in Abadan. I was involved in many businesses to make ends meet as your father earned a modest salary at the time, back in the late 1950s and early 1960s when colonial rule still existed. I sold stockfish at Dugby Market, as well as laundry, fufu processing, and sewing, just to name a few. I made money back then, but your father's relatives would frequently visit us with their financial issues. I helped them as your father didn't have the means to do so. My own children were still young and I had not yet had the opportunity to lavish my wealth on them. I hoped that these relatives of your father would support their education in the future, but that never materialized. To make matters worse, I was unable to save much. As I started to plan for savings, the Biafra Civil War broke out in 1966 and I had to leave Abadan for our hometown, Iliagba village. We had to start anew with nothing as most of our assets were left behind in Abadan. We only brought our children Ada, Ulu, Apara, Osot, and Ikena with us. She stopped and did not mention me. There and then, I began to ask why my grandma didn't mention my name. Nioma and her family began to live hand-to-mouth existence until two of her daughters Ada and Ulu got married. Also, Apara left for boarding school while the others remained with her including me. I learned so many skills from my grandma. One of such privileged skills was how to fry gary, process fufu, and pounding of it. I learned also how to do hair, because Nioma was highly skilled in hairdo. I did not only learn the skills from my grandma, but also knew how to keep their house clean at all times. It was easy to sweep Nioma and Pa Ikenga's room, because Nioma arranged her properties on wooden materials that were attached to the mud wall. Nothing was kept on the floor, except a few wooden chairs used for relaxation. I also learned to cook palatable food. Grandma taught me how to be a good cook. There was a man, one of Nioma's kin's neighbors who said to her one day, Nioma, you will cook food for the mourners on the day of my burial. Nioma laughed and asked Matsindo how he knew he would die before her. Nioma, my grandma received a lot of accolades due to her unique wits in handling any adverse and encouraging situations, be it economic, social, material, educational, or relational matters. She was well able to surmount them. Nioma was the breadwinner of her family, especially after the Biafra War, when so many Igbo men became jobless. She engaged herself in cassava farming in order to produce gary for the family's consumption. Sometimes, she sold other products to get money for her children's school fees. There was a particular term when Apara was sent back home for not having paid his school fees, and the examination was about to start. On seeing Apara by that time of the day before school was over, 
she nearly fainted because she knew that nothing would make him play truancy. The boy was a bookworm. She had tried to save money for a para school fees, but couldn't because his younger brother, Ike, got ill and was taken to the community hospital where she spent almost all her savings to save his life. How come it is this time that I don't have enough money that you are sent back home for school fees? Nielma asked Apara. Nevertheless, my grandma went to Olaido, her bosom friend, to discuss her predicament. Olaido gave her five shillings to complete Apara school fees. Take this money and do not pay me back. You have a nice heart, Olaido told her. After a Para school fees incident, she resolved not to borrow money from anybody in Iliagba village. This led her to intensify efforts in the farm work, including dry fish and cocoa yam business. With these products, her family's standard of living improved. Her husband, my grandpa became so proud of her. Nioma became an example of a good and resourceful wife in Iliagba. Whenever any of the women asked anything from her husband, she must be told to visit Nioma to learn from her wisdom. You are a greedy woman, one man told the wife. Moreover, Nioma loved formal education. That was the reason why she made sure all her children went to school. She was trained together with her female siblings by the Roman Catholic white missionary Reverend Sisters at Amekuku, a town near Iliagba. One of the Reverend Sisters during their day trips discovered that Nioma and her siblings needed help. The Reverend Sisters took my grandma and her siblings to the convent to train them in the white man's school. They lived with the Reverend Sisters for three years. In the convent, Nioma learned marketable skills that served her later in life such as discipline, Christian religion, neatness, and cooking. No wonder I took after my grandma. I was a complete replica of her character. I am intelligent, self-reliant, and resourceful, and never will stop until I have done the job. Grandpa stood six feet tall and had a dark complexion. He worked as a cook for Mr. Golden Baker in the European quarters in Abaddon. Despite working tirelessly, Grandpa received a meager salary of just 20 pounds, which was not enough to support himself or his family. His colonial master took advantage of his cooking skills, offering only a free house in the boys' quarters and the leftovers from Mr. Golden's table, such as bread, butter, milk, and hot coffee. Nioma took it upon herself to ensure there was food on the table for the household, running various businesses to make ends meet. Grandpa would frequently promise her that things would improve once he secured a better-paying job, but these hopes were never realized until the 1966 pogrom of 30,000 Igbos in northern Nigeria forced the family to move to the eastern region. It was a race of survival for all Igbos in Nigeria. Though, Grandpa did not relent in his efforts to look for a new source of income. In his motherland Iliagba, and the land of his ancestors, he learned how to tap palm wine, cut palm fruits for the production of palm oil, and do other village jobs. He sold palm wine and palm oil to support his wife and feed his children. He did everything to remain a man in a society where breadwinners are men. Grandpa would whisper to Nioma in a mellow tone any time he wanted to hand in the small money from his sales of palm wine and oil to her. Nioma was cooking his favorite dish that evening. Enani, I know you are trying so much to keep our family from starving. Please, take this to add to what you have and keep sustaining us. Archie must surely intervene in our favor. Nielma would burst into tears, cry, and later be consoled by Grandpa and her older children. Life continued this way until Nielma and Grandpa's children finished secondary school and left for the cities after the Biafra War. The end of the Biafra War was terrible for many young girls because the Nigerian soldiers were looking for Ojukwa tomatoes, meaning young Igbo girls. Some girls from my village were raped on the farms. My friend Nkechi was raped by five Nigerian soldiers and nothing happened. Nioma was lucky to escape being raped when she saw from afar soldiers coming in her direction, she knew different paths in the land. She took the safest route, following her intuition, panting as she ran for dear life to her compound. These soldiers committed atrocities that cannot be forgiven.